I'm not trying to get anybody in trouble. I mean, not my intent. So please don't go report this and get somebody fired. Those folks need those jobs. That said, <laughs> I just cannot shake my sense that my supermarket is violating health code stuff. It's the Safeway off college, you know, the, the one by the art school. I was there Sunday in the hour before they close. I, I don't usually go that late, but I'd spent time with my cousin that afternoon and, you know, just it just pushed everything back. Anyway, I park close to the door and head inside and the place does not smell right. There's a stench and it seems to be coming from everywhere. My first thought is it's got to be the carcasses. Like it just it has to be right. I don't usually start shopping in the carcass section. I don't like them just sitting in my cart and room temperature as I shop. Um, but I, I wanted to figure this odor out. I push my cart over there and the glass case is pretty picked over. There's still like a lamb carcass and a piglet carcass and like a few disemboweled hens. And like I roll, I roll by them all casually, sniffing as I go. I wager it's the birds because they were organic tortured and those tend to rot faster than animals who were tortured and pumped full of antibiotics. But the organic tortured hens don't smell any worse than anything else. I asked the butcher, were these carcasses all bled out and gutted within the last few days? And he assures me they were. And that Safeway has a seal of quality for a reason. And I believe him. I mean, because the smell isn't any worse in the carcass section than it had been at the entryway. I usually take the store aisle by aisle, but the next likely suspect is the vegetable section. I head on over there, getting ready to breathe through my mouth. But when I get there, nothing looks unusual. I bend down and smell the blood on the floor. I mean, it, it's not crusty. It's still, I mean, it's still a little bit sticky to the touch. I stand back up. And I do the same thing I did with the carcass section. I mosey down the display, inspecting produce as I go. I pause at the tomatoes. I squeeze one. It's ripe. I pick off one of the calluses and I hold it up to the light. I mean, it's thick, all right, but that means that whoever it came from had been doing this a while, and I mean, I prefer that. I sniff the callus. Nope, no fungus. I stick the callus back to the tomato and I put it in my cart. You know, the smell is actually a little less pungent here. I move into the fruit section and I head straight for the pineapples. I have seen flies there before, but there are no flies. These look really fresh. I mean, okay, a, a little picked over again. I mean, a Sunday night, but I mean, good. I don't need pineapple this week, but if I did, I'd probably get at least two of these. I give one a squeeze. Tough skin, good, firm flesh, plenty of fingernails, and whole ones too, not just the little chips you get with the apples and the kiwis. You can see the bloody nail bed roots on these. You know, they were torn away in one clean jerk. I lift a pineapple up to my ear and sure enough, I can still hear the echo of a shriek. I mean, I'm guessing it's a woman, but it's really faint. So the pineapples don't stink, neither do the pears, or the melons. I give the berries, you know, an extra check because sometimes the coating of mucus and tears has a masking effect on rot. That is not the case tonight. The fruit is good. I mean, better than usual, honestly. The odor is unlikely to originate from the boxed foods, but I do a quick pass up and down the aisles. You know, they, I mean, there are ingredients I need there, but I'm fixated on this smell. So I barely look at my list. It's not coming from the breakfast aisle. It's not coming from the food taken from the pantries of murdered mothers aisle. Not the cooking oils or the bag of crunchy ashes aisle or the peanut butter or the noodles or the condiments. Okay, wait, okay. So the bags of crunchy ashes were two for six bucks. So I did go ahead and grab a regret and suffocation and an exploitive nacho rancho. And uh, I, I tossed them into the cart. I mean, okay. <laughs> I eat healthy, but I have my weaknesses. I'm almost ready to ask an employee where the smell is coming from when it becomes obvious to me. I mean, <laughs> it's the frozen food. 
Like I said, healthy eater. I don't shop in frozen foods. I don't know which foods are the likely culprits. So I follow my nose down the long line of freezers. Frankly, (laughs) I'm pretty grossed out just looking at these meals. I mean, who eats this shit? Anus meat poppers? (sighs) I mean, what? I grab that one out of the freezer and turn the box over. Yep. Come on, people. Don't look at the branding. Look at the ingredients. It's anus meat product. (laughs) I knew there was no way that thing had actual anus meat in it. I put the box back on its shelf backwards. Maybe that way someone will actually pay attention. And as I do this, I get a whiff. A strong, rancid whiff. I gag, but I'm righteously satisfied. (laughs) Bingo. I follow the whiff. I go freezer door by freezer door, opening them and inhaling, moving closer to ground zero. On the sixth door, the stench is so thick, I cough. I slam that door shut for a minute. I breathe deep. And then I open it back up. It's some frozen dinner pasta. A whole bunch of red boxes that you heat up in the microwave, right? I pull out the box closest. There's some Italian-looking guy with a big mustache and his arms flung wide. The branding reads, Mario's Landfillers Macaria. I scan the box for the sell-by date. (laughs) Oh, wow. This thing isn't just expired. It's expired by almost a year. I grab the one behind it. Same story. And the one behind that. Same long-gone expiration date. I set the three expired meals on the top shelf of the cart and start looking for an employee. (laughs) I am complaining. I will be that lady tonight. I walk past three empty aisles until I see an employee standing by the hot food bar with a big cardboard box. I head over. I grab a Mac and Rhea out of my cart and I'm about to address the employee. But I halt. I cannot believe what I'm seeing. The employee is shoveling a steaming hot tray of food right into the box. (laughs) Surely he's not throwing them away. Surely. I ask, "Uh, excuse me. The employee jerks backward and looks at me. Uh, yeah. Those are sweet and sour mixed carcass nuggets, right? Uh, yes, ma'am. They're still hot. You're not throwing them away, right? He smirks awkwardly. Uh, It's the end of the shift, ma'am. Well, we have to. (laughs) But you can serve them again tomorrow or, or, like, donate the food to a refugee camp. He gets this scared look on his face, and I assume it's because he thinks I'm angry at him, which I am, but then a voice from behind me startles me. A man asks, Miss, is this employee bothering you? I jerk around. (laughs) It's a manager. Big name tag and everything. And his eyes are wide. Oh, oh, and he's smiling. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, no, (laughs) no. I spit out instantly nervous. No, I I was just, I I was just asking a question about the mixed carcass nuggets. Were you hoping to purchase some? Did this employee prevent you from doing what you want? No, no. I mean, I don't want any, I mean, look, are you smelling this? I shove the cold box towards the manager. These are expired. He takes it from me carefully and inspects it. His smile falls. Oh, ma'am, I am so sorry. I tell him, they're all expired, okay, by a year, and it's making the whole store smell awful. Could you please address this? The manager's face goes ashen. He falls to his knees and begins to weep. And I appreciate good customer service, (laughs) but I don't need waterworks. It's too late, though. The manager grabs me by the knees and starts screaming. Oh, God. Oh, God. I'm so sorry. Shame. Shame on my head. Oh, God. The fires of shame. I look over at the employee. He's resumed the shoveling the nuggets into the box, pretending not to notice. Enough. I put my hands on the sobbing manager's shoulders and try to loosen his hold. 
He looks me in the eyes and pleads. Punish me, ma'am. I pull my hands back. I beg you, ma'am, I can't bear the shame. Punish me. I need this to be over with. I ask him how he would like to be punished. Feed them to me, he says. But, sir, these are frozen, like, bricks. I mean, you won't be able to chew. Shove them in. This was not how I saw my Sunday going, but I initiated this moment, so I'll finish it. I open the first box. You know, it's not easy. The stench is incredible. The ingredients are fully rotten. I'll never order this dish again. <laughs> I mean, not even at a nice restaurant. Also, his mouth rips, like, a lot. There's blood. You know, a couple of other shoppers start pausing to watch. But after about 10 minutes, I managed to get the three umber blocks into his esophagus. Well, I, I mean, but, you know, it... It also ripped, but that's okay. I offer to help him to his feet, or, you know, even breathe into his mouth a little, but the manager firmly refuses any aid. Me and the few other customers watch as he struggles to survive, and, you know, when it's clear that he's died, we all clap politely. Oh, thank God. The employee has good customer service instincts. He breaks the mood with, Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> to thank you for your trouble, anything in the hot food bar is on the house tonight. Please enjoy. The small crowd cheers. Even me. I mean, I don't want any hot carcass tonight, but I'm clearly the only one. The other shoppers swarm the hot food bar, laughing, packing their go-to boxes with steaming chunks. The employee approaches me once more and says, Th Thank you for informing us, ma'am. I'll see to it that these mac and rias are swapped out. Thank you. <sighs> And thank you for finding a creative solution rather than wasting all that hot food. You got it, ma'am. Always looking out. I nod. I go back to shopping. I check out. I go home. I make myself some dinner. A salad. And it's good. Like I said, you know, I'm not trying to get anyone else in trouble. And I appreciate the steps the Safeway staff took to fix the problem. But I still can't relax about it. <laughs> Someone there is not paying attention, and I doubt it was just one sloppy manager. Has anyone else had an experience like this at the Safeway on College? I mean, the place seems like a health department headline waiting to happen. You feel me here, right? Hey there, kids. It's me, Mr. Creepypasta, and I just wanted to give a big thank you to you for watching tonight's video or listening to tonight's podcast episode for uh, clicking on this Mr. Creepypasta story time. Before I wish you sweet dreams tonight, I just wanted to give a big thank you to Taisea Lynn, Gino Baga Arneo, Eric Mary, Daniel Polson, Trey Smiles, Jordan Alexander Sanchez, Wayne Milestead, Ken Lando Higuchi, Brianna Ventine Jensen, Nicholas Saeed Alyasin, Buddy Burroughs, Tyler Ramberg, Goonington, G. Weevil 3, Diana Krauss, Asia, Gabrielle DeBaca, The Red Oak Shield Virus, Sandy Barney, Melissa Swagart, Chumpinski, Daniel Rao, The Ginger Bros, Robert Ramirez, Andrew Stenberg, Holy Realm, Ralph Rodriguez, and Dr. Strawberry. These guys are the friggin' amazing people from Patreon who help me stay alive. If you guys would like to help support the show as well, you can always check me out at patreon.com slash mrcreepypasta and get your name either shown here at the end of the credits or in the description down below. And you can check out this podcast here on YouTube or here on Spotify or Apple iTunes podcast or Google Play podcast, whichever one you happen to go to. I mean, seriously, if you're on YouTube right now and you look down in the description, there's like a whole list of different playlists that you can be able to watch, like hours upon hours upon hours of content. If you want to get your horror story creepypasta fix, it's, it's all there, as well as like a live stream. Oh, and also my wife sells Dungeons and Dragons themed tea. Etsy.com slash Ivory Monocle Tea. Links are also down below. <laughs> Sweet dreams, everybody.